What's up, fuckers? Wow. <laughs> that was a... Uh, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> not what I was expecting. <laughs> What's going on, guys? I have Gronix here, and welcome back to week two of the Elise in UCL. Woohoo! It's so fun. It's such a great place down here in Bikini Bottom. Oh yeah, Sandy, spread those cheeks. My god. Dude, it's I don't know what hit me. It was like a shot of heroin. It just... Mm, hit me. Recording is so fun. So... Today we jump in is a preview for week two of the uh, Elise in UCL Team Aqua Conference. If you guys want to check out Team Magma, go over to Soros and Croxon's channel. He has the Team Magma preview up there. Team Talk Aqua. about He's Team Aqua. Oh, Team Aqua. I'm so used to seeing, saying Team Aqua. This is the Team Magma. This is the Team Magma um, preview to all the battles taking place. The five battles taking place are Gomez versus Me Agron, Yodler versus Kraft, Zach versus Tepig, Steven versus Jay, and Six Pads versus Cubshu. So um, today I have Joey. Yo. Dribbling Excadrill. Link will be in the description. If not, if I forget, Joey, leave a comment. So just click on the comment. And uh, I also have Yodler. Hello. That, that's, all, that's all you need to say. Yodler doesn't need a channel. Yodler doesn't need an intro. You can check out Yodler at fuckyourself.com. So today we're going to jump in and uh, we're going to go straight into it. Everyone ready? Go ahead. I was hoping someone would say no so we can just stop. But yeah, so... The first battle, we're going to literally go through, uh, just as you see it on the screen as the list, we're going to start with Gomez versus Agron. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to talk about this battle too much because obviously it's my battle, I don't want to give away a few things that I have planned, so uh, we're just going to start. Uh, Joey, do you want to start? Um, alright, this one's, uh, first one, you versus Gomez. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I gotta check the teams real quick. I think um, it's going to be a very, very interesting battle. If you guys don't know, Gomez was my co-coach um, for the D-League. He was the Indianapolis Rapidash. Uh, he didn't get a, a win in the D-League, but I still stand by. He played very, very well uh, in some parts. And he's he's been in one week in the main league, and he beat Jay last week. Uh, so we're both 1-1, one, one, uh, one win and zero losses. So whoever, what, no matter what, someone will lose, take their first loss in this battle, which is pretty nerve-wracking. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I see it looks like a really good matchup. It looks it's, very, very good, yeah. Because I'm, I'm looking at stuff that he has that answer, like, what do you have to answer that? And like, okay, what do you have to answer Clefable? All right, you have maybe Weezing, you have Heatran, but then he's got Infernape. Um, yeah, and then I have Latios, and then he has this, and then I have that. It's, yeah, good. it's very, so it's very just, balanced. So it's... Uh, It'll it'll come down to who plays, um, who plays their threats better, and that's that's what I like. That um, it's going to be very difficult to figure out who wins. Mm -hmm. uh, Yodler, do you want to take it away? All right. Um, no, I didn't see Gomez's match because it wasn't it saved. Wasn't there but yet. I kind of, I read through the, the battles and his Ladio set. I thought that was actually pretty good and. If he's able to kind of do that the same way, uh, I mean, other than, uh, I mean, not even heat train because it gets earthquake, but if he's able to set up not one, maybe like three, I know that sounds ridiculous, but three dragon dances, which would be hard to do. And it would be foolish of you to let him do that. But if he could find a way and play around to be able to do that and with like roost, um, it would be very hard for you to win, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, to the same effect, if I was to bring in Mega Absol and set up a Swords Dance, uh, oh, yeah. you know, it's the same way. So th that's why I think mm -hmm. the battle is very, very mixed and very, very balanced. And I think it's going to be a yeah. lot of fun. It's definitely going to be a lot of fun mm -hmm. to watch. Um, like I do always with these video guys, I hate to call a winner. So we're not going to say a winner. We're going to say the outline. Uh, so, Joey, who do you think, uh, what do you think Gomez has to do to beat me? Let's just put it that way. Um, to beat you, I think his biggest thing he's going to have to get rid of is most likely your wheezing. Once your wheezing goes down, um, there's not much. Like, you have, like, you still have some um, check to his main offensive threat, but for the most part, from what I'm seeing here, like, without wheezing, your team pretty much goes down after that. Mm-hmm, true. Um... Because, like, with Weezing gone, then your only answer 
to Clefable as Heatran, and, you know, Earthquake, Hidden Power Ground, Close Combat from Infernape, uh, that easily takes it down. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's definitely going to be a problem. Yeah, uh, Yodler, what you think? Alright, I think if Gomez can use his Latios, maybe he doesn't even need a setup, maybe he just comes in, fires off a hard hit, and then maybe switches out. If he can do that effectively and preserve it, then I feel like it'd be hard for you to win. Yeah. Um... But at the same time, like, uh, Absol, if you can preserve that and hit hit Gomez's team hard with Absol, then it'll be hard for Gomez to win. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, the battle will be uploaded this weekend, guys, so definitely stick around for that. Uh, next battle we have is Yodler uh, versus Kraft. Uh, like I did with my battle, I don't think we want Yodler to say too much. We'll have a say a little bit at the end, Yodler. But um, Joey, do you want to start with this battle, or will I? Um, I'll start. Yeah. Um, I think Yodler dropping the Buffalon for Gorbis just for that potential shell smash. I don't think he necessarily needs it, but it's just something else that Kraft has to prepare for. Yeah. And probably needs to like that can just threaten him to not go full offense full hyper offense against them and I think that'll like maybe the mind games will be there or maybe he won't think that it's that it's even mind games and Yoga can just bring Gorbis and Shell Smash and pass it to something like a Hydreigon or um, maybe a Metagross or even Mega Venusaur and um, that definitely helps him out um but, I mean, there are a lot of walls that Kraft can just break through with Kira Black, with Low Punny, with Togekiss, Volcanion, Heliolisk. That's just, you have to see if, like, you have to see if Yodler's walls can answer it. And right now, like, even a Scarf Kira Black looks like it puts in a ton of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely something I'm scared of. Because, like, you know, even with Mega Venusaur, all right, you come in, you think Thick Fat uh, can take an Ice Beam from a Scarf Kiram, but Mold Breaker goes through that Thick Fat, so now he's just hitting you with a stab, super effective move. So, mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah, um, like uh, Yoler just said, um, you'd be silly to not think about Kyron Black and Lopunny. Yeah, they're definitely very, very scary threats. But uh, like I was saying that Zack, who played Kraft last week, was one of the few people I think can beat Kraft. I really do think Yoder can be one of the few people that can beat Kraft. Um, simply because uh, Yoder's team is very, very balanced. You know, Rotom Heat, I think is a man that a lot, not a lot of people have talked about. Uh, pretty easily, um, you know, comes in on some Pokemon. Uh, comes in on Shaman. It comes in on Togekiss, stuff like that. Uh, even comes in on Heliolisk to a certain uh, extent uh, I could do a lot of work uh, Sloking, uh, Sorison was saying that uh, Sloking uh, can do a lot of work to Lopunny, which it can um, and also can come in on the uh, whoa the voice break, holy shit it also come in on the um, the Volcanion uh, I don't know how much it can do to it, but can definitely come in so I think uh, Yodler definitely has the tools to beat it uh, to beat Kraft, and um, it's just how he uses some of his offensive mods, but also keep in mind that um, sometimes you gotta fight offense with offense. So, um, Yodler, do you wanna say a few words just about the battle? But obviously, don't give away too much. Alright, well, Kieran Black destroys my wall core. Yeah. Uh, kills Rotom Heat with a Mold Breaker Earth Power, mm -hmm. or, yeah, whatever it's called. Uh, Bolt Strike Slow King, Iron Heads Aromatisse. Ice Beam's Venusaur, Earth Power's Metagross, Ice Beam's Mandibuzz. So there's not really too much I can Earth, do to... Earth Power's Rotom Heat. Yeah, he said that yeah. yet, So Sorry. It's gonna, it's gonna be difficult for me to stop it, but I have, I have somewhat of an idea. Yeah, cool, cool. Obviously, don't say too much, but uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun uh, to watch. Obviously, uh, Sorsen, actually, again, Sorsen Croxon, if you wanna go over to his channel, he has, uh, on probably Monday or Tuesday, he'll have a video of all the replays, so you can watch it there if you want to. But next, we'll move on to uh, Zach versus Tepig, a match that uh, I think is gonna be very, very interesting. Zach beating uh, Kraft last week, as I uh, previously mentioned, Tepig narrowly losing to me uh, after a misplay. Um, so, does anyone wanna start, or will I start, or what are we gonna do? Um, 
Zach versus Tefik. Um, I want to see how well Zach is able to handle that Gothitelle. Yeah. I think Tefik is definitely going to bring that, and it's definitely going to be a support. Um, the Amoongus is going to be a, a nice pivot, just because it can, you know, it can spore, it can clear smog, uh, it can pack a hidden power, but you know, it'll switch in on something that it can take a hit from and kind of threaten it out, like. If Zach wants to stay in, it will be a one-on-one. -on -one. Like, uh, Amoongus can 1v1 a lot of the things on his team and eventually beat them 1v1. So Zach is going to eventually have to switch out. And then with Amoongus switching out with Regenerator, that's just going to preserve Amoongus for a while. Uh, Gothitelle is going to trap something. Starmie is an offensive power. Uh, Primate can definitely do something. Uh, the threat of Ditto... Uh, Nato Queen on there and uh, Mega Diancy, um, along with you know Steelix being a wall uh, as well. That's I, I just want to see how Zach counters that. Yeah, uh, Yodor, do you want to take it up here? Uh, sure. All right. So, I Sand offense is always really strong. Yeah. But uh, Tepig with Scarf Primate, he can actually that probably doesn't have Speed Excavate. I don't so think never mind. it does. Scarf Starmie might. Uh, per, yeah, probably does. But yeah, speaking of that, Scarf Starmie could do decent amount of work. Uh, Hydro Pump probably doesn't kill Extra Drill because of the Sand Special Defense boost. Uh, that's only with um, Rock types. Oh, it's not with. Uh, ground yeah, types it, it would probably types? kill to be honest. Oh, hmm. all right, but um, but I just see that that could do a lot of work. But Seismitoad, I feel like is a good wall that Zach might be able to take advantage of in this matchup because I know it doesn't it doesn't get like reliable recovery, but it just like Starmie it can water absorb those hits. Magmortar walls out, Primate I mean it's Seismitoad is pretty bulky, so I doubt Primate would be able to a KO it. So if Seismitoad is like preserved and like kept healthy, then it's, I think it stops some of Tepig's like key offensive threats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and uh, the, the same way Zach has Seismitoad that stops Starmie to a certain extent and Mega Diancy to a certain extent, I feel like Amoongus also stops a lot of Zach's stats for Tepig. So uh, for me personally, I feel like uh, Amoongus is more scarier than Seismitoad for each of the teams only because uh, Seismitoad, you know, Hidden Power Grass can usually be able to take care of stuff and two Hydro Pumps from a Life Orb Staramie or, you know, Gothitelle being able to set up on it if it traps it uh, will be able to take care of Goth uh, sorry, of Seismitoad. But I feel like Amoongus, um, there's not a lot really that Zack can do. He doesn't have a mom that immediately threatens it. You know, there's Gardevoir, but it's weak to Sludge Bomb, so it can't exactly just swap in straight away. Unless his extra drill was in, which is the only real, um, you know, time I think that would work. Um, it can take it from Scullipede and, you know, extra drill and stuff. Um, and he can run Ice Beam on Porygon too, and uh, stuff like that. But I don't feel like th there's an immediate threat to Amoongus. Um, and, and actually, Tepic didn't bring Amoongus against me, which I was completely expecting. So who knows? Tepic might not even bring Amoongus. But uh, if Tepic does use Amoongus well, I feel like Tepic has a very, very good chance. But uh, it's Zach. You can never uh, underestimate Zach. So um, does anyone want to say anything else about Zach and Tepic? I think we covered it. I think we covered it pretty well. So we move on uh, to Steven and Jay, the fourth battle. Um, Steven suffered a loss to uh, Zen in the Aqua Conference, and Jay faced Gomez, who I'm facing this week, and he lost to a very, very narrow 2-0. Uh, Steven losing a 4-0 to Zen, so Steven definitely has a lot more to prove in this battle. Um, Jay made a slight misplay against Gomez, leaving his uh, Charizard X in on a Gudra and setting up a Dragon Dance on it. Definitely a huge misplay. So I feel like Jay definitely um, is a good battler, but he definitely has a... A habit of making some plays that are pretty questionable. Um, Steven seems very, very good as well. Um, so, does anyone uh, take it away or like to search? Uh, all right. So, Jay versus Steven. Um, I think the big thing here is how well Jay can deal with that big team. Yeah. <clears throat> um, like, I'm not seeing much that covers, you know, a physical big team. I feel like Charizard X can do a decent job at taking V-Creates, but that's really about it. Yeah, I mean, with if, if Steven gets Stealth Rocks up, 
Yeah. Um, he's got a lot, like the only real answer that Jay has to that is maybe Charizard X and Crocodile. Possibly Kingdra. Uh, Bolt Strike can deal with Kingdra, I think, pretty well. Maybe, it depends. Yeah. So then, if Steven can build his team around giving Victini as many chances as possible to hit, um, I think Steven will do well. I think for Jay, the big thing to win is to get rid of that Victini, prevent the Suicune from setting up, and then getting his own um, setup sweeper in there, whether it's Charizard X, whether it's possibly Dewblade. Uh, Moxie um, Crocodile. Moxie Crocodile. Pack. I don't think he's going to bring Moxie Crocodile, mm-hmm. but um, yeah. you know maybe something else gets in there and, and does some work. So... Um, It'll definitely be interesting to see how he does that. Yeah, Yodler, do you want to say a few words? All right, so you guys were talking about Victini. I wonder if uh, a physically defensive Intimidate Crocodile with Pursuit, I feel like that would could deal with Victini decently well yeah. because just just because it could take one hit. And Victini is, of course, going to want to switch out because it's likely Bandit or Scarfed. Or, I mean, maybe it's Sub. But... Just that would uh, that would kind of stop it. I feel like not completely because it could just U-turn predicting the switch, and that's and that's gonna do probably like fifty percent to even a defensive crocodile. And crocodile doesn't get any recovery, so it's definitely not a hundred percent check. But it's just something that Jay could possibly use to just deal with the big big teeny. Yeah. I think the biggest thing for Jay is how, I know we're talking about Victini a lot, but like you bringing up Crocodile, I think Charizard X does a decent job of covering it. To me, I feel like Jay being able to deal with the Suicune on Steven's side is the biggest thing. If Jay can preserve his, uh, preserve his uh, Whimsicott um, and his Thunderous, I feel like he'll have an easy time of dealing with the Suicune, but if those go down or are weakened and killed by Scald, or obviously, or even Victini killing it and then allowing Suicune to come in. I feel like Suicune can do a crazy, crazy amount of work to Jay's team. Uh, but on the other hand, if Jay sets up a Dragon Dance with his Charizard, I don't feel like there's a lot Steven can do if the Suicune is dead. Um, and also Donphan, I feel like, is a mon that we haven't talked about too much on Steven's side, but Donphan is very, very good for Steven. Uh, because it has, it's a decent check to Charizard X. Uh, it can even be assault vested if you wanted to to deal with the thunderous. Um, you know, it can beat the gold. That's Golbat, the Crobat. Um, so Go- Donphan is there, very, very good. And like Joey was saying, getting up rocks is possibly the uh, the main uh, you know thing that Steven will have to do. Um, but uh, you know, Steven still has um, Sylveon. We've kind of gone through like a lot of Jay's team, but I feel like Steven still has Sylveon, Mega Ampharos. There's still a lot of very scary mounds in Steven's team, so it's definitely going to be a very, very fun match to watch. Um, does anyone want to say any more words, or are we done with that? All right, I guess that's nothing. <laughs> Silence means move on. So finally, we have the uh, out of conference battle: uh, six paths from Team uh, Magma. I don't even know if it's a team, but uh, Conference Magma versus Cub Chew from Conference Aqua. Um, this battle is, in my opinion, the battle of the week. Uh, you know, just just based off preview. Uh, I think this is going to be a great battle. I think it's going to be very very intense because both players are going to want to prove something Cub Chew was saying that you know he could easily beat six pads six pads losing to uh who was it he lost to me yodler yeah me. i don't know why i went black uh six pads using the yodler obviously he has to start uh, getting his win back so um and six pads doesn't lose often so he's definitely gonna want to get a win here so um joy do you want to start uh honestly i think this game is way too close to call mm-hmm. um I think the biggest thing is just going to be what Six Pass mindset is, and um, like how well he's going to do uh, matching up with these two. Because you know, the Scissor is something you just pack HP fire on. Something that like the Scissor feels comfortable coming in on. Yeah. Um, the Volcarona is going to do a lot of work. I feel like the Granville might even do some work as well. I so, I think so too. Actually, I think Granville is very very important. And I think Six Pass is keen on using Golbat. Yeah. So, um, and honestly, I don't see where Superior can set up. Yeah. And, um, you know, I know the Galvantula can be there to set up sticky webs and all, but, you know, once that thing goes down, one defog and Galvantula becomes useless. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Yodler, do you want to take it away? All right. Um, so Six Paths brought us luck uh, in my battle against him. He brought a lot of stuff I wasn't expecting, and it kind of threw me off guard. I wasn't expecting Golbat, and I was not expecting it at all. And I did not bring much for it. I hardly brought anything. I think the best thing I had for it was Rock Slide on Hydreigon. It, but I was able to just whittle it down with Metagross. But if like Six Pass can bring like some unpredicted or unpredictable stuff, like maybe like Dual Dance Torterra, I don't even know if that does well. Just some stuff that Cub Chew wouldn't expect and wouldn't prep for, then I feel like he could win. But it's just so close. They're both good battlers. Yeah, they're both very, very good battlers, and I don't think anyone can call the six pads. You know, his main four or five to me is Jirachi, uh, Keldeo, Volcarona, Snorlax, um, and th those match up kind of like they all beat one another, but also this beats that, and this beats that. You know, Cubshu has Scizor, Gar uh, Gar Mega Garchomp, which he's used very, very well with the Gavantula Sticky Web, so. I know it's only been one battle, but you know, uh, you know, you can see that there is definitely the threat there. That if uh, Garchomp can definitely just uh, sweep six pads if he's not careful, but um, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And again, if you guys want to see the replay uh, on Monday or Tuesday or whenever a source and upload to cover source and Crocs's channel, and it'll be there. So that's week two. I hope you guys are excited for it. Uh, I know I'm going to very very looking forward to uh, Gom uh, my battle with Gomez. Uh, Yodler is going to have a lot of fun trying to be craft. Uh, so Yodler, oh, yeah. ha have fun with that. But um, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Like I said, guys, Joey, check out Dripping Extra Drill. Link will be in the description or check the comment section because I'm a little bit of a ditty. So uh, that's going to be it. I hope you guys have enjoyed and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.